All right, guys, quick audio one for you today. I'm just going to show you some really quick and easy EQ techniques to EQ your voice over vocal, just to give your vocal a clearer, more professional sound. So let's get into the video. All right, guys, Neil from Neil Collins Recording. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back to my channel if you're not. Either way, appreciate you watching my video. If you do enjoy the video and find it helpful or both, then please do give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I read and reply to all your comments. I'm trying to build a bit of a community here. So leave a comment below and let's start a conversation. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that I can let you know when new content is released. I'm releasing content on a Monday and Thursday at the moment. Gear tech, tutorials, reviews, all that sort of thing. It'd be great to have you on board, so please do hit that subscribe button. So today's video, we're going to carry on with a little mini audio series that I'm putting together just to give you some simple audio techniques to make your audio sound a little bit clearer and more professional. I have done a video on how to record voiceover straight to Premiere Pro, which you can find here. And I've also done a video on some compression techniques that you can find here. But this video today, I'm going to show you how to EQ your voiceover just to make it sound clearer and more professional. So here I've got some audio that I recorded earlier. And I'm going to show you the techniques I would use to EQ the audio just to make it sound clearer, more professional and get rid of any of the nastiness that in, is in the audio. And that's what you really want to be doing. You want to be getting rid of anything that sounds a bit nasty. I'm not going to get too much into the technical side of EQing. There is quite a science to it. In future videos, I will be going more in depth into EQ. But for now, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. So even if you don't know anything about EQ, you can still use this video to make your vocal sound clearer and more professional. I'm going to put my headphones on for this. So first things first, make sure when you are EQing is you have a decent pair of headphones so that you can hear what you're doing. Playing it through computer speakers isn't really going to cut it. So you will need to get a pair of headphones. I'll leave a link in the description to these the headphones that I use. Um, I love these headphones and they're not that expensive, so I'm going to leave a link to these below. Now I'm going to be EQing in Adobe Audition today, but you can apply these techniques to any audio editing software. They're really simple EQ techniques. So as long as you've got the parametric EQ plugin, which most audio editing software interfaces will have, then you'll be fine. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to go and find our EQ and our parametric equalizer. And that all looks similar to this. Now the first thing I will do is a high pass and a low pass. And all you're doing there is you're taking anything in the low end that you don't need and anything in the high end that you don't need, taking all that noise out for a start. If we click on our high pass, on this parametric EQ it is set to 40 hertz. Now I know that anything between sort of 60 and 100 hertz you don't really don't need so let's just set it around sort of 75 75 is a good number now as you can see on my waveform i've got a few pops and clicks so this should get rid of some of those if you have a pop shield on that's what pop shields are for to stop all that invest in a pop shield and you should get rid of all those pops and clicks anyway but i'm not using one today so i have got a few pops and clicks that you can see in my waveform this high pass should get rid of a lot of those and then if we just click on the low pass, it's set at 18,000 hertz. That's a good number. You don't really want to go too far below that because then you'll be taking a lot of the tone of the vocal away. So 18,000 hertz. I mean, most people can't really hear much above that anyway. So that's a good number to cut anything above. Okay, so cut the low and the high. And this is the difference so far. So I recorded this audio earlier This is before. KG C214. Really nice mic. And this is after. A lot of my voiceovers. Before. Uh, tutorials. And um, yeah, highly recommend it if you're looking after. for a nice condenser mic. I don't think they're... It's just taking a little bit of the boom out of the bottom end. So that's cool. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is start notching out of some of the horrible resonances. So... So what we're going to do is we're going to choose one of our notches and we're going to boost it to 9 dB and we're going to bring it so it's a nice narrow band. And then we're just going to scan through, we're just going to scan through our EQ and find any nasty noises and get rid of them. So if we play the audio, 
and we're just going to look for residences that we don't want to be there. So I'll show you what I mean. So I recorded this audio earlier on my AKG C214. Really nice microphone. Used it for a lot of my voiceovers, uh, tutorials. And um, yeah, highly recommend it if you're looking for a nice condenser mic. I don't think they're overly expensive, but I will leave a link. So if you can hear that, there's a resonance there that we don't want in the audio. So anyway, for the purpose of this, what we're going to do is going to go to minus six and then we're going to widen that band out again. So we have a listen back. Go earlier on my AKG C214. Really Let's nice mic. Like. Like. For a lot of my voiceovers, uh, tutorials. And um, yeah, highly recommend it if you're looking for a nice condenser. So I think minus six is a bit much, so I'm going to have it around minus three. Now, usually when I cut EQ, I don't usually go below minus three. Um, unless I really have to, unless it's something that I really need to get rid of, then I might go a bit further. But minus three is usually a good number for me, personally. If you do disagree, please do comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. But I tend to stick around the sort of minus three dB mark. Okay, so I've got rid of that frequency. So what we'll do now is we'll just grab another notch and we'll do the same thing. So and we're gonna really narrow that band and we'll just have a listen back and see if we can find another one. I recorded this audio earlier on my AKG C214. Really nice microphone. Used it for a lot of my voiceovers, uh, tutorials. And um, yeah, highly recommend it if you're looking for a nice condenser mic. I don't think they're overly expensive, but I will leave a link in the description below if you want to have a look. Okay, so there's another one around there. So, go to minus three. And we just widen that band out again. So if we take those two notches out and then put them back in, let's have a listen. So this is out. I recorded this audio earlier on my AKG. Let's put these in. Really nice microphone. Used it for a lot of my voiceovers. Okay, so really subtle, but it has cleaned the audio up. And um, yeah. So we just do one more of these. So if we go to nine again, and we will narrow that band, and we'll just play it through again. I recorded this audio earlier on my AKG C214. Really nice microphone. Used it for a lot of my voiceovers. Okay, uh, so. Tutorials. And um, yeah, highly recommend it if you're looking for a nice condenser mic. I don't think they're overly expensive, but I will leave a link. Okay, so there's another one there. So let's just notch that one out. So minus three again. And we'll just widen that. Okay, so as you can see, they're all in a similar sort of bandwidth, really. So we've notched out all the nasty resonances. And that's what you want to do first of all. You want to subtract the resonances that you don't want before boosting anything that you do want. So then what you want to look at is your lower end of the vocal, basically the meat of the vocal, which is around the 200 to 500 mark. That's where the body of a vocal lives, basically. So you want to have a look around there. Now, I know from past experience on this microphone that I'm going to need to notch a bit of that out because my vocal's a bit boomy in that area. But this is also where if your vocal sounds a bit thin, you may want to boost it around the 200 to 500 mark. So we'll just have a listen back and make a few adjustments. So I recorded this audio earlier on my AKG C214. This really is nice where my vocal is, so I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. And um, yeah, highly recommend it if you're looking for I'm gonna do a too much. mic. I don't think that. And that's all I really need to do in the low end. I just need to bring those frequencies around the 200 mark just down a little bit because they're just a little bit too booming. Okay, but you might find that your vocal's a bit thin there, in which case you would just increase that by 3 dB, say. And the next area you want to look at is the very high end. So on your parametric EQ, you're going to want to look for this symbol here, which is a shelf. So you don't want the notch, you want the shelf. Okay, which we've got here. On this parametric EQ, we've automatically got a shelf added in. You want to do a shelf around the sort of 12,000 mark, really. And you just want to increase it by, again, say 3 dB. A bit so. expensive, but I will leave a link in the description below if you want to have a look for yourself. So. Anyway, for the purpose of this video, we'll be EQing the microphone. Just a tiny bit. And that's all it really needs, just a sort of 3 dB increase, just to boost that high end slightly and bring a bit of clarity through on your vocal. 
And that's all I would do. So let's just have a listen back before and after and you'll be able to hear the subtle differences that I've made. Okay, so this is without EQ. I this audio earlier on my AKG C214. This is with EQ. That's microphone. I used it for a lot of my voiceovers, uh, tutorials. Without. And um, yeah, highly recommend it if you're looking for a nice condenser mic. With. I don't think they're overly expensive, but I will leave a link in the description below if you want to have a look at yourself. Anyway, for the purpose of this video, we'll be EQ with the microphone, but the EQ method will be similar for any microphone without you are EQing. Um, you're just looking for with the harshness in the vocal, and that's all that I would do in terms of EQ in the vocal. Take out all the harsh frequencies, boost where it needs to be boosted, bring down where it needs to be bring down, and really subtle changes, sort of 3 dB. 3 dB is a good number for me, you might find different, but I very rarely go below 3 dB in either increasing or decreasing. I usually stick around the sort of 3 dB mark. And then I might increase a bit of the low end just to make your vocal a bit fuller. I might increase in the high end just a tiny bit to give a bit of clarity. And that's all I would do really. Obviously there is more of a science to EQ than this, but this is just showing you a really simple way of EQing your voiceover audio. So even if you don't know anything about EQing, you can EQ your vocal so it sounds nicer in your videos. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video and found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, I read and reply to every comment. It'd be nice to start a conversation with you guys. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so I can let you know when new content is released. At the moment I'm releasing content on a Monday and Thursday so please do subscribe to the channel. That's it for this one and I'll catch you in the next one.